Mr. President, great to see you again, sir. Thank you. Uh, the Supreme Court, this big deal, Roe v. Wade, the, the Supreme Court now authenticating that draft uh, opinion by Sam Alito, in essence, overturning Roe v. Wade. Were you surprised to see this? Well, we don't know exactly if that's true because it was certainly something that they're working on. It would imagine, I don't think anyone made it up. It sounded like him. He's a great man, by the way. He's a tremendous guy. But uh, as a justice, he's just fantastic. And, uh, and you have some, some great ones up there now. But we have to find out what that means. And is somebody going to do something about it? Are they going to try and change it? Uh, is it real? Nobody really knows. And they don't know who leaked it. I will say the leak was a terrible thing. Mm. You're just not used to that for the Supreme Court. We see it uh, so much leaking in our world, in your world, in my world. Mm. And although not so much now, it's very interesting. You know, you try and cover those leaks, but you've never seen it or they've rarely seen it in the Supreme Court. Yeah. It was very shocking, I think. Uh, uh, I think it was a very bad thing for the court. Well, Chuck Schumer says it's all your fault, of course, if Roe v. Wade gets overturned. Obviously, he's talking about those three pro-life uh, Supreme Court justices. Yeah. Does that impact your thoughts? Well, a lot of people are very happy about that. So some people maybe say it's my fault, and some people say thank you very much. Yeah, for sure. Let me ask you a little bit about this uh, Biden and his uh, this cognitive issue. You mentioned the other day you want to see some a result or you want to see a test taken. Do you believe he's mentally unfit? Uh, for office, and do you think the 25th you know, Amendment should be invoked? <laughs> it's such a nice question. <laughs> but look, I think that so much is riding right now that somebody that's running for office before you have the election, I think you have to take a test and you have to be sharp. When I look at what you're dealing with, I know them all, I know every leader, they're at the top of their games. I mean, some are nice, some aren't nice, some are vicious, and they're all smart. And you cannot be like we are now. This war in Ukraine should have never happened. A hundred percent would not have happened with me. And I decided to take one because the fake news was having fun no matter what you did. And I took one and you know, it was an amazing thing. They now call me a dictator and other things, but they don't call you stupid because I aced it. And you got to ace it. You got to do well. You gotta, if you're going to be president and you know the Chinese system, you start from very young and it's like a big pyramid. And the smartest guy gets to the top. It's sort of an amazing system, okay? Uh, nothing I recommend strongly, but you know, you're dealing with these people that are top of the world, top of the game. Mm -hmm. And I watched what happened in Europe and I watched the decisions that are made and you watch the news conferences and we need, this country's going to hell, just so you understand, this country is going to hell between the border between the Afghanistan removal, the way we got out giving the Taliban $85 billion worth of weapons, you know? They're the, now the number one munitions seller in the world. Did you know that? Number one in the world. They're selling the stuff we gave them. And, and we fled. It was like we fled. Not one soldier was killed in 18 months. I spoke to the leader. I said, don't do it, in a very strong way. I said, don't do it. Abdul he said, don't do it, Abdul. But we had 13 soldiers killed. We had many horribly injured. And you know, nobody ever talks about them. They lose legs and they lose arms and beyond that, and nobody talks about them. No, I think having a test is a very good idea. Mm -hmm. And mentally unfit, you don't want to judge. I don't want to say it, let them take a test. You know, these okay. tests are good. They're, they've done for a hundred years and they have them down to a science. I mean, they're good right. and they're not easy. You have to be sharp. and. People that are in that position have to be sharp. Yeah. The Ministry of Truth, as they're calling it, this disinformation governance board that you've heard about, what do you make of it exactly? You wonder if they're going to go after like a truth social? I mean, this is scary stuff. This is Orwellian stuff. What's your well, story? especially the person that's doing it, because that she's a political operative. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's no good anyway, because who knows who this person is? But they literally, they picked a person that would be the last choice of certainly a certain party, and actually probably of both parties, because most people believe it's called free speech. You have to have free speech. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, it's, it's not even believable that we're talking about this subject, if you want to know the truth. Mm -hmm. Who would have believed that we're talking about somebody that's going to censure people over a period of, over a long period of time, and very strong. Now they're saying, oh, no, it's just a recommendation. That's where it all began. I guess that's what they used to say in Russia. 
That's what they said in the Soviet Union, right? We're just going to do it a little bit. Uh, no, we can't do that. We can't do that. That's a horrible thing. And imagine you, in your administration, introducing some sort of Ministry of Truth, what the media would have done with Well, that. I have a Ministry of Truth. It's called Truth. Mm. It's called Truth Social, which, by the way, is doing very well. I don't know if you've seen the numbers. Yeah, number one app. Would you get me? Yeah, it's a number one. Can you believe it? Mm. Number one. TikTok was two. Twitter was three or four. Number one app. And it's great. And I hope you people are all going to get it. What's your advice to you? We have a strong Christian influence there. You know what the... On Truth Social is what you're saying? Yeah. You know what it is? Me. (laughs) I have strong Christian influence. Go ahead. Fair enough. Uh, What's your advice to Elon Musk, by the way, on Twitter? Well, I like him. I helped him when he had difficulty. Uh, I think he's a very good guy. Uh, I'm not going on Twitter because I have truth. I I think truth is Mm -hmm. a better modern day version. Mm -hmm. But, But I think he's a really good guy. Paid a lot of money for that. And I hope it works out. Let me ask you a little bit about It's not that. really as directly a competition. You know, we're also looking at competing with Facebook and competing with others, too. But, so you don't see the truth as competition? Is, well, everything, look, everything's competition, right? Yeah. Everything. You can probably say uh, the network's a competition, everything. But we're looking at beyond Twitter. Mm-hmm. And we have a system that's a very modern, very updated system. If you look at pictures or if you look at prints or if you look at they look better. Mm-hmm. Truth has really been amazing. I mean, to be number one on the Apple app yeah, yeah. is pretty incredible, That's I think. Uh, the culture, uh, as we like to say, gone, kind of going to hell in a handbasket. I mean, this transgender movement is out of control. Joe Biden thinks there's at least three genders. I would think more. Um, what do you make of it specifically? And I am curious as it relates to whether or not you see this transgender movement, not transgender people, but the movement is, is evil, unbiblical. A lot of people say this is, this is not the way it should be. It's not the way it should be, that's for sure. It is a terrible thing. I mean, especially when you're taking children that don't even have this period to form. Mm-hmm. And you know, in many cases, I hear 60% of the cases, later life, they're saying, why did they do this to me? 60%. Uh, No, I think it's a terrible thing. I think what's happened with Disney and what Disney's doing. Walt Disney is looking down. What's he thinking? He's not happy, okay? (laughs) Walt Disney said, what have happened to my beautiful Magic Kingdom? Uh, He's not happy. No, it's a a terrible thing. Who would would think some of, like, some of your questions are excellent, but who would think you would even have to ask questions about, like, things like this. You could also ask about men playing women's sports, Mm -hmm. competing against women in sports. And you see the records that are being broken by 38 seconds. You know, a swim record that's lasted for years, it gets broken by 38 seconds, which is, you know, unthinkable. Uh, When you see some of the things that they talk about today, Mm -hmm. you can't even believe the questions being asked. It's it's so ridiculous. Well, here's another question. Now we're talking about uh, are the left in this country okay with what they call this word grooming, right? This grooming. In other words, talking to little kids about LGBT lifestyle. What's your view on the grooming uh, comments that a lot of conservatives think this is grooming by the left? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm opposed to it, obviously. I'm mm-hmm. opposed to many of the things that we talk about. Mm-hmm. I can think of nothing actually that I'd before. This is a dif- different world. It's a new world. And I think it's actually going to be shut out. Uh, you know how it's going to get shut out? Mm-hmm. Common sense. It's common sense, but I think it's going, and I think religion will help shut it out. You know, nobody has done more for Christianity. Nobody has done more for religion of all type than me. And they're really doing things now too. And I've always said it, they are against organized religion. They're against Christianity. They're against Israel. There's no question. You look at what's going on with Israel. If they go back into that Iran nuclear deal, Israel is going to have a very tough time surviving unless something happens. Mm -hmm. And that would be a very bad thing. Election integrity. I I, got to get to it. Uh, Senator Rick Scott said the other day that he believes that liberal activists and the Biden DOJ are using lawsuits and charges of racism to basically uh, weaken all of these election integrity laws. Uh, Do do you believe Democrats are playing the race card in this? Well, they've always played the race card. And even on- They've played, of course, in this, but they played the race card for as long as I can remember. And they play it so much that people don't take it so seriously anymore. And that's a positive thing, not a negative thing. Uh, They say it about people 
that are less racist than any people anywhere in the world, okay? You're a racist. And whenever you hear that term, that means you're winning because what they're doing is that's their last, that's their last card. Mm -hmm. And they've used it with me, and it's failed very badly. But uh, they play the race card for many years, as long as I can remember. Yeah. Anthony Fauci, uh, Senator Rand Paul said this, oh gosh, it's been six, nine months ago. He said that he's concerned that Fauci lied to Congress over gain-of-function research. He wants the DOJ to, in essence, start some sort of criminal referral on that. Are you concerned about Fauci? Do, do you want him investigated? Uh, and looked at here in terms of lying to Congress? Well, Rand has taken it very, very, uh, you know, to a very high level. And, and he does feel that way. I spoke to Rand yeah. about it. Um, when Fauci came with me, you know, when he was in, he's been there for 40 years or something. Mm -hmm. But when he was with me, he had very little to say. I didn't have him in a position like he is now. And actually, he said, keep the country open to China. And I said, no which I, I had 21 people in the room. Almost all of them said, keep it open. Mm -hmm. I saved hundreds of thousands of lives by closing it to China. Then I saw what was going on in France and Italy, and I closed it to them. Mm -hmm. uh, and frankly, we made some great decisions. We made great decisions. I think it's one of the things we worked so hard, because this, this horrible China virus, mm -hmm. COVID, whatever you want to call it, China virus is a far more accurate term, but mm -hmm. it came over and nobody had any idea and what we did in terms of therapeutics, what we did with Operation Warp Speed, and it's been given credit, but I think we haven't been given the kind of credit we should get. Oh, I, I agree. On, on Fauci, though, do you want to see some, if GOP took over the House in, in uh, November after the midterms, would you want to see an investigation into, into this? Well, you can look, but look, uh, Fauci uh, is a different kind of a guy. He's mm -hmm. a liberal Democrat. He's been there for many, many years. Mm -hmm. Uh, I didn't use him very much from the standpoint of, you know, now they've given him this great power where he's calling a lot of shots. Uh, he would give recommendations to me. And generally speaking, if you look at his recommendations, for instance, at the beginning, he didn't want masks. He was totally anti mask He was saying masks don't work. That went on for three or four months. And then he became a radical masker. I said, so tell me, I lost a little bit of confidence when I heard that because I said, that man over there, What's your story on masks? No, no, no masks. Then four months later, you're saying everybody should mm -hmm. put masks on your ears, your nose, your hair. I mean, as many, you know, he went, he went a little well. Uh, yeah. So no, I'd let Rand just fight that out. He can do whatever he wants on that. But Rand feels very strongly about it. Let me ask some political questions real quick. Uh, the midterm elections, you know the media is going to be looking at your one loss record. Uh, you've endorsed a lot of candidates. W what's your sense here in terms of how this will play out, and do you, how much stock do you put in this win-loss record of yours? So my record is unparalleled. Uh, my endorsements, it's totally unparalleled. Nobody's ever had a record like this. I'm almost unblemished. Mm. Uh, when I endorse somebody, they go up. Uh, J.D. Vance I endorsed. And now that will be, I don't know when you're gonna be broadcasting this, but that'll be tonight, you'll know. Mm -hmm. So we'll know. But J.D. was down by about 12 points and I endorsed him and now he's leading and we'll see what happens. Uh, Dr. Oz is a fantastic guy, likewise, and he uh, was down, and I endorsed him, and now he's up. But they're spending like $50 million to beat him. Uh, it almost seems unfair, you want to know the truth, but they're spending a tremendous amount of money. Um, Ted Budd in North Carolina, he was not, it wasn't that he was down, people didn't know him, he's fantastic. Now he's up 17 points, so he's doing really fantastically. So I have, I have many. Uh, Carrie Lake is doing a great job in Arizona. She's a pistol. Well, she's fantastic. And her big thing is uh, election integrity and the, ele the rigging of the 2020 election. I mean, she's literally, if, if you ask her, how are your children? She says the election was rigged and stolen in 2020. Mm -hmm. She's totally on that message. And I understand that message. Mm -hmm. We had somebody named Mo Brooks who was on that message. I endorsed him, and he went up 54 points. He was leading by 54 points. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows that. And then one day, I think he hired Romney or McCain people or something. Somebody gave him some very bad advice at a rally. He said, let's not talk about the 2020 rigged election. Mm -hmm. Who knows what it was? Let's go on to the future. And he got booed out of the stadium. He got booed. I've never heard booing like this. I said, by the way, I don't know what you said, but you just lost the election. Mm -hmm. And he went way, way down, and I unendorsed him, actually. Uh, he should have never said that. This is a guy with a 54-point lead, right. and he hires uh, Mitt Romney's people? <laughs> I mean, tell me about that. Let me ask you a little bit about the state of the Republican Party. Uh, I remember Joe Biden saying months ago at this press conference he had that he goes, he couldn't believe all these Republicans still afraid of Trump. It's like, oh, they were all afraid of Trump. 
should Republicans be afraid of you, the ones that are, are not in line with you and your views? Well, if they want to win politically, probably, because if I endorse them, they win, and if I don't endorse them, they don't win. I mean, that's mm -hmm. almost 100% of the case. Uh, and, and I only, you know, I, I view it as a very important function. If I like somebody and if I think somebody's good, I'll endorse. Otherwise, I don't do it. I don't endorse everybody. Even if they're going to win, I don't endorse everybody. Uh, it's a very important, it's almost, it's like a great honor it's been bestowed upon me because this has never happened before. You know, an endorsement, they say for years, I've heard this statement for 25 years, an endorsement isn't worth the paper it's written on. And yet when I endorse, look at Ron DeSantis was great. Look at other people, great. Look at, I mean, some bad ones like uh, Kemp. I endorse this guy, Kemp, he's been a disaster. I mean, election integrity in particular, he was horrible. I think he cost us the Senate. He's, he certainly, he cost, in my opinion, he cost me the state or a big factor. He did a consent decree that was a disaster. He wouldn't do anything for the Republican Senate where they wanted to have a special session on election integrity. Uh, no, I, I endorsed him, he was dead. And he won. So, you know, not all of them are good endorsements, to be honest. But I think 95% of them are good endorsements. Yeah, a few last questions. Uh, Ron DeSantis, if he, looking ahead to 2024, you'll make that decision sometime in the future. If he gets in the race and you're in the race, uh, does he have a shot? Well, I don't if you're both in the race, if you're you both know, in the race. We were just together this weekend. It was interesting. He yeah. came to Mar a Lago for something, and it was, uh, it was very nice. We, you know, we have a good relationship. Look, when Ron, asked me to endorse him, he was at three. Immediately after I endorsed him, he went up to 71 and the race was over. It was over that minute. I remember that. So I think Ron knows that. And Ron and I have a very good relationship. I like him a lot. Yeah, the media wants, you know what the media wants to do. Well, I know, they, they like the narrative. Uh, sometimes they'll say, I like him and it never gets put in. No, I like Ron, I have a good relationship with Ron. And I'm proud of the fact that I gave him an endorsement. Ron was at three. It was over for him. Mm -hmm. And I endorsed him. He went up to 71 mm -hmm. immediately. In fact, the man that he beat had it made, the agriculture commissioner. You know that? Oh, right. And I saw him a year later. He said when that endorsement was given, it was like a bomb went off, to use a bad term. Mm -hmm. But it was like a bomb went off. He mm -hmm. said the race was over. And he was at 38, and he had $28 million in the bank. Ron was at three and he had no money in the bank. And when I endorsed him, the race changed. Then I got him past Stacey Abrams. And Ron knows that better than anybody. And I think that, you know, Ron and I have a very good relationship, I will tell you. Speaking of relationships, how is that relationship today with Mike Pence? Honestly, I haven't spoken to Mike in a long time. What's a long time, would you say, roughly? I mean, I don't want people to start saying what a long time is. A long time, a long time is four or five months. Mm -hmm. I haven't spoken to him in a long time. And he's a nice man. He disappointed me on one thing because I think he uh, should have sent the votes back to the legislatures. I think you might very well have had a different, today you would have, I mean, when you look at what's going on in Pennsylvania and Wisconsin and, and uh, all these different states, when you look at what Catherine Engelbrecht has found, I don't know if you've had her in your show, but you should, what she's done with ballot harvesting, she's found millions of votes. Mm -hmm. And today, it would be a no contest. But it's interesting. They said he had to be a conveyor belt. He had no choice, no matter what. If it was fraud, it was right. he has to send him up to the Oak Row, Mitch McConnell, right? And didn't, he had no choice. And then I see, a month ago, a group got together mm -hmm. so that the vice president can't do that. I said, well, wait a minute. I thought he had no choice. In other words, there was nothing that gave him the right to do it. Mm -hmm. But they're working on something so that he can't do it, meaning a vice president can't do it. So I was right. He did have a choice. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been working on it. If he gets into the race in 2024, he's thinking about it. Uh, I'm assuming you're going to say, I don't want to put words in your mouth, no shot here if he gets in the race in 2024? I, I don't want to say. Look, okay. I, if Mike get, got in, it would be, um, I, I think it would be a hard one for him. I think it would be a hard one. I understand where the base is. I love the base. The base loves me. Uh, I think it would be hard, but Mike was a good guy. I thought he was a very good vice president. Mm -hmm. He was my friend. I haven't spoken to him. I just endorsed his brother. You know, his brother's a congressman right. and a good guy, Greg. But, uh, no, Mike is a, a very good guy, but he disappointed me greatly. And I think he disappointed a lot of people greatly. Yeah. Let me ask you, as we wrap up here, uh, the God question, if you will. Look, there are so many evangelicals that saw you 
uh, when you were president, it was a divine appointment. They, they saw it as, as for such a time as this. You're not in the Oval Office now. Have you kind of thought about, I mean, what is God up to exactly? Have you kind of, so how, how do you see it in a, spiritual so, terms? Sort of a great question for a number of reasons. People that weren't sure, because I wasn't a politician, so I wasn't really out there, but people when I first came in that weren't sure at all are now my biggest fans, evangelicals and others mm -hmm. are now my biggest fans, especially since everything I said was right. By the way, and I'm not just talking about energy and the border, and the, I'm talking about, about religion. I said these people are against hmm. evangelicals. I said they're against Israel. I said they're against organized religion, frankly, but they're against all of the things that you and I and most of your viewers stand for. Mm -hmm. And when I, uh, when I said that during debates and elsewhere, people sort of weren't sure. I turned out to be right. And the other thing is, I've had many, many evangelicals and Christians. I've had many, many uh, Jewish people tell me. Mm. I was far better than anybody ever thought. They say the best ever at helping what we love. Mm -hmm. We love God. We love our religion. And no president was better. I mean, I wiped out the Johnson Amendment, which was so bad, which gave huge penalties to people if they spoke in a little wrong manner, people that we respect, mm -hmm. like pastors, ministers, people that we respect. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've had many people say, as good as I think we were, they said, you were the best at it, you were the best, and they want me back. Mm -hmm. Oh, you think they'll, you'll take them up on that offer? And, and by the way, you're gonna have a very important decision coming out of the Supreme Court. Right. And uh, I put on three judges three justices that, I, I don't know, again, this was very early. Nobody knows what this means. Was it, is it the real deal? Is it not the right deal or mm -hmm. the real deal? But it seems to be a leak. It seems to be accurate. We're gonna find out. I think the concept of a leak is despicable, by the way. Mm -hmm. But um, I put three justices on it and almost 300 federal judges. Uh, we changed the whole system. Yeah. But uh, I've had great support from, evangel from the evangelical community. Right. So the evangelicals, the uh, frankly Jewish people, yeah. people of faith have loved the job I did. Very nice. Thank and you, sir. It's my honor. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very Good. much.